Food. Yummy food. Do you love to eat food? Do you get a pleasurable experience from eating food? Or do you eat for performance so that your body looks good, feels good, and can do all the things that you want to do? Do you have a combination of both? So you love to eat food and you love the way it makes you feel and you eat for performance. And we all have different reasons for eating, of course. Uh, there is an interesting terminology that I am uh, have wrapping my head around, and maybe you are too, is this concept of superfood. What is a superfood? And I often have a giggle about food in general. <laughs> I've been an exercise professional for over 40 years, and food and nutrition and dieting and eating, and it's all very controversial, and, and fashion changes, and there's different fads, and there's different um, concepts, and there's different philosophies and it's very controversial and it's changing all the time and interestingly the concept of superfood has uh, kind of gone in and out of fashion and I always have another giggle because it might have been in fashion 20 years ago and then it comes back into fashion and people think that it's new because if you're 20 you didn't know that it was in fashion 20 years ago so you go oh wow there's this new thing well, the interesting concept about food, and let's start with the fundamentals. If you don't eat, what will happen? Uh, we all need to eat something at some stage. We need to put calories into our body, which is the the measurement or the unit measurement of energy. So we've got to we've got to put energy into our body because otherwise we don't have any energy and we'll end up dying. Okay, so that's the fundamentals. Pretty cool. Uh, then there's four macronutrients, and that's uh, again. A fundamental that sometimes people forget what what is the definition of a, of a macronutrient, and could it be that your body can live on it? So there's alcohol, fat, carbohydrate, and protein, and your body can live on any of those. Uh, and obviously, your body would prefer a combination of those, which is one of those interesting concepts again, where people talk about the macronutrient percentages or have you got your macros right. Well, that simply means, are you getting enough fat, enough protein, enough carbohydrate, and do you need to have alcohol? There's an argument there, but there are some people who love to drink alcohol, and it's a beautiful part of their life. So yes, they'll probably tell you that, yes, I need to have alcohol in my life. So here's my next fundamental question. If the human body can live on those four macronutrients, and we would like, or your body would prefer a percentage of some of each of those... But what would happen if, so this is my hypothetical, you're in the desert, you're in the bush, and you've got no food whatsoever, and you came across, and we'll use this one first, you came across a bottle of alcohol, and there was nothing else to eat, there was nothing else to drink, and you came across some alcohol. If you drank that alcohol, would it keep you alive? And interesting answer, it might not give you the high performance uh, energy that you need to survive in the, in the uh, bushes or in the desert, but it would certainly keep you alive. So question, if a macronutrient can stop you from dying, e.g. alcohol, would that make it at that time a superfood? Because if you don't eat food, you're going to die. There's a, an interesting question. Next question, if you came across an animal, so protein or animals are protein and fat, uh, if you ate that animal, so you ripped it apart and, and gave it a good old barbecue, or maybe not, even if you're a vegan vegetarian and you didn't want to eat the animal, if you did eat the animal, would it keep you alive? If you eat fat and protein or a combination of both, uh, would, it, would, you stop, would you not die? There's a great question. Uh, and I'll go a step further. If you came a, across a bag of butter or a, a bottle of oil uh, and there was nothing else to eat, would your body survive? And I hope we never have to do that. But of course, if you put calories into your body and your body can use those calories for energy, then of course you won't die. Pretty cool. Uh, here's a controversial one. Let's use bread. Some people don't like bread. Some people are scared of bread. Some people think that bread's going to make them fat. Uh, and bread is a carbohydrate. Of course, there's most bread's got um, fat and protein in it as well. But let's just say we'll go with the we'll call bread a carbohydrate. If I have nothing else to eat and I eat bread, will I stay alive? Now, some people would rather die than eat bread. I get that. But if they did eat bread and they there was nothing else to eat, would they not die? Great question. Of course, the answer is yes. So I can drink alcohol. I can eat fat or protein, I can eat carbohydrate, and those things will keep me alive. So could that be a definition of a superfood? And that brings us to our next question. 
what is a superfood? It's a very fashionable term and you'll hear it quite regularly. Uh, most magazines or uh, anything, any podcast or anything on social media about nutrition, you'll find something on superfood, not very hard to find. So some of the superfoods, common ones, are perhaps oats, maybe not in a paper sachet with uh, brown sugar and cinnamon, that just happens to be how I like to eat my oats. But uh, oats have been called a superfood. Uh, dark chocolate, often called a superfood, and this one in particular has dark chocolate and almonds. And interestingly, almonds, rather than Brazil nuts or cashew nuts or poor old peanuts, they get a rough trot, don't they? Nobody really wants to eat peanuts. No one thinks, oh, peanuts are a superfood. But almonds sometimes get a definition of superfood. So in this beautiful piece of chocolate, I now have dark chocolate and almonds. Is that a superfood? Uh, there'll be, uh, some people will talk about fruit as a superfood, berries in particular. Uh, I've just read a, an interesting article on bananas and why they are a superfood. Uh, here's one of the reasons why. They come in their own little safety package. So when you get a banana from the supermarket, you don't have to worry about dirty hands because the inside, it's, it's, you have to peel this thing and eat what's on the inside so it's a nice safe food. So there's a great question. Is a safe food a superfood? Uh, fish, sometimes called a superfood, and if you combine bread and fish, that's quite biblical, isn't it? Uh, was Jesus trying to tell us something about the, the bread and the fishes? Maybe that's a superfood. Uh, interestingly, I'm going to go back to chocolate because I've got two kinds here. I've got dark chocolate with almonds, but I've also got white chocolate. So there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, conversation about why dark chocolate is a superfood, but white chocolate is not, or milk chocolate is not a superfood. Same with wine. Red wine is considered to be a superfood in some countries. Uh, there's some people that suggest that if you have one glass of red wine every day, maybe even two, that you might live longer, and there's some interesting studies to show that. Uh, you might be like me, where if you drank two glasses, two glasses of wine, you'd probably die. I don't drink at all, and two glasses of wine, I would have some serious serious challenges going on in my head. So what is the definition of a superfood? And if our body runs on carbohydrate, protein, fat, and we could run on alcohol, uh, could there be a better question? Could it be what is your favorite food and what gets you to perform at your best? So I'm going to ask the question again. Why would you waste calories on food that you don't like? So somebody might say to you, you should eat oats because they're a superfood or you should eat berries because they're a superfood or it might be green vegetables. There's a good one. Kale. Kale's a really fun conversation because it's been in fashion for a little while uh, and it seems, according to the people that grow it and sell it, that it's going out of fashion. People don't want to eat kale anymore, or not so many people want to eat kale anymore. Uh, why is that? Uh, it, it, it's considered a superfood. If you have a look at the micronutrition of food, so macronutrition is I can survive by eating this food. Micronutrition is my vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, the things that my body needs for my hair, my skin, my nails, my bones, vitamins A, B, C, D, E, all of those things. Uh, what, what makes a superfood? And is it because it's got more than one vitamin or mineral or phytochemical or antioxidant, is it? Maybe it's got 27 of them. And if you then go and do some interesting research of your own, not just read a magazine article or listen to a podcast or have a look at what a social influencer, social media influencer is saying about food, if you actually go and look at the biochemical makeup of food, what's it made of? Uh, I'm going to use an interesting example. I had one of my students share with me that uh, they were really excited about eating kumara, sweet potato, because it was a superfood, but they would never eat white potato, never ever eat potato because that's a carbohydrate and that's not good for you and that could make you fat. But kumara is a superfood that's really good for you and they were eating that two or three times a day. Now I'm going to challenge you on this one because I'm not, the thing with food and me being an exercise professional, one of the big things that I've learned is that food is a very personal thing. If you have a conviction about food, a belief about food, a passion about food, foods that you like and foods that you don't like, uh, I'm an absolutely firm believer that you should eat the way that you want to eat. But if you start believing some of those things, carbohydrate makes you fat, kale's good for you, only eat vegetables that grow above the ground, eat kumara but not white potatoes, 
Uh, have a look for yourself. Always, when somebody gives you information, I always ask these two questions. Why would I do that and how does it work? Or why is that the case? And tell me how it would work inside my body. Now, the interesting thing about carbohydrate, vitamin C, because potatoes are high in vitamin C, kuma is an orange. So one would expect that, or sweet potato is orange, yellowy orange color. One would expect that it would be higher in vitamin C than normal potato. My challenge to you is this. Find out for yourself. If you really believe something that somebody tells you about food, could it be a good idea to work it out for yourself? And I always go a little bit more logical and a little bit more broad than can't have that, mustn't have that, this is a good food, this is a bad food. I always ask this question, as you know, or there's four questions that I ask. Number one is, do you have a stack of energy? And whatever food you're eating, superfood, normal food, average food, doesn't matter, food, uh, should you be able to demand from your eating plan that you have a stack of energy? So if you're eating superfoods or you're eating a certain percentage of macronutrients or you're eating a certain way because somebody's told you, should you have a stack of energy? Should you wake up with a whole heap of energy and should you be able to maintain that energy throughout the day? Now, to me, that's a really important question because what's the point of being on an eating plan if you don't have a stack of energy, if you feel tired and lethargic and can't be bothered? And the reason I ask that question, of course, is the ultimate of uh, getting fit and getting strong turns your body into a fat burning machine, virus fighting machine, happy drunk pumping machine, high performance machine. How can you exercise at 100% effort? How can you sprint? How can you lift heavy? How can you punch hard? How can you put in an intense effort into your exercise if you don't have any energy? So uh, one of the interesting uh, questions I've always had is what's the point of being on a diet, a low calorie, uh, don't feel like doing anything because I'm not eating enough, if you can't exercise hard, what's the point of the diet? Because obviously there's nothing that you can eat that will make you fit and strong. Yes, what you eat gives you the energy so that you can puff and you can lift heavy, but eating is not what makes us fit and it's not what makes us strong. Uh, so there's nothing that I can eat, there's nothing that you can eat that's going to turn your body into a fat burning machine, into a virus fighting machine, into a happy drug pumping machine, into a healthy body. Uh, we have to exercise to do that. So this is the, or food is the fuel for that. So great question, do you have a stack of energy? And if you don't have a stack of energy, could it be a really good idea to have a look at what you're eating? Because it's obviously not working. If you don't have a lot of energy, then you can't exercise. And if you can't exercise, you can't be fit and strong. So obviously the fuel you're putting in isn't high performance fuel. Second question, so number one is energy. Number two is performance. And macronutrition gives you the energy to do what you need to do. Micronutrition, which is your vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, and, and antioxidants, are the things that should give you high performance and help you look good. So obviously we need vitamin A, B, C, D, E, uh, sunshine. We need, uh, again, it doesn't matter where you get them from. There's a lot of argument about I should be getting my vitamin D from the sun or from a supplement, as long as you're getting vitamin D, of course. I always ask this question though, uh, could it be better to get it from natural sources rather than out of a pill or a powder that comes out of a factory that's been manufactured by a person? It's just an interesting question. So your performance the way you look and the way you feel is that 100% all of the time. So every time you demand something of your body, whether it's exercise or using your brain or making love to your partner or dancing in a nightclub or climbing a mountain, any time that you have to perform, are you performing at your best? And whatever you're eating, whatever eating plan you're on, whatever exercise, you plan, exercise plan you're on, should you be able to demand from that that you have number one, a stack of energy, and number two, that you're performing at your best? Number three, uh, for some people, is the most important thing, uh, and for other people, they don't care anymore, they just want to feel good, is how do you look? And if you have a, 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 a perception of how you want your body to look in the mirror when you look at it, should you be able to demand that from your eating plan, from your exercise plan? So you might be talking about a nutritional plan, a diet, superfoods, but if you don't love what you see in the mirror, if you're not getting the results that you want from your eating plan, could it be a good idea to change it? Because number four is exactly that, results. So number one, energy. Number two, performance. Number three, do you love the way, the way you look in the mirror? And number four, are you getting the results that you want? And if the answer's no, does it matter what you're eating? Because it obviously isn't working. 
even if you've got the right percentage of macronutrients and every food that you eat is considered a superfood and you're counting calories or counting macronutrients or making sure you've got the right percentage of macronutrients and all the stuff that we do, is it possible that it's not working? Because should you be able to be able to demand those four things from your eating plan? The reverse of that, if you do have a stack of energy, if you are performing at your best, if you do love what you see in the mirror and you are getting the results that you want, could it be a really good idea to just keep doing what you're doing, whatever it is? And interestingly, again, only because I've been an exercise professional for so long, and this is one of the questions that I always, or the four questions that I always ask people, uh, there are some people who eat far more protein than is recommended by the, you know, the orthodox 1 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. Uh, that's the recommendation, but there are people that eat way more than that and they love it and they've got a stack of energy, they perform at their best, they love what they see in the mirror and they're getting the results that they want. There are some people that just don't eat animal products whatsoever and it's, it's been suggested that the, the purest form of protein or a complete protein comes from an animal, but there are plenty of vegan vegetarians who have a stack of energy, they're performing at their best, they love the way they look in the mirror and they're getting the results that they want. The reverse of that, there's a plenty of plenty of people who are carnivores, who don't eat any fruit and vegetables, they don't eat any grains, they just eat animals, they just eat meat, some people, and when I ask them, how are you, they say, yes, I have a stack of energy, I'm performing at my best, I love what I see in the mirror, I'm getting the results that I want. So here's a great question. Could we all be individual people? And as an exercise professional, when people ask us about food, superfood, macronutrients, micronutrition, is carbohydrate bad? Should I be eating more protein? There's a whole heap of questions. Could it be a really good idea to ask the person, what do you like to eat? What don't you like to eat? What are you eating at the moment? Why do you eat that way? Is it religious? Is it ethical? Is it uh, moral? Is it uh, a, a conviction or a belief? Were you brought up that way? Why do you eat the way that you do at the moment? Where do you like to eat? Because for me, that's a really important thing. Uh, some people just have a very specific uh, schedule in their day and they love to eat at a certain place, at a certain restaurant. They love to eat with their family. It's a big deal for some people where they eat their food. Other people don't care. Would it be important to find out? Uh, when do you like to eat? There's so much argument about three meals a day. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Uh, you should be eating uh, intermittently. So you should have 16 hours between each meal or 24 hours between each meal. Uh, could it be really important to ask the person that's in front of you, why do you eat the way you do? Where do you love to eat? And when do you like to eat your food? When is it important for you to eat food? And I always ask this question. Uh, we can say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but some people just don't feel like eating. Uh, and if you're an intermittent fasting person, people who uh, literally are aiming not to eat breakfast, why would you tell them when to eat their food? Why don't we ask? Why don't we spend or invest more time finding out about the person that's in front of us? Uh, some people love chocolate. Some people hate it. Some people drink every single day, and I never drink. I'm not interested in alcohol. Should it be good to find that out? Some people hate bread and some people love it. Some people uh, eat fruit and some people would never eat fruit. They think it's got too much sugar in it. Some people love to eat tuna out of a can and they think it's a superfood. And other people would never eat tuna out of a can because they would never eat fish out of the ocean. They are aiming to save the fish in the ocean. Some people eat oats every day and some people would never eat oats because it's carbohydrate and they are a carnivore. Uh, probably the only one that stands out here uh, from a macronutrient point of view uh, and at, from a food point of view and a nutrition point of view is this stuff. <laughs> uh, if you are in the bush, if you are in the desert and there isn't any food, uh, you could probably live two, three, four, five weeks now. There are some people that suggest that the, the, the human body is capable of fasting for a very long time. But if you don't have any water, uh, you don't last for very long. There's, again, an argument about how long that would be. But if you dehydrate, because your body is predominantly fluid, if you dehydrate, uh, you get sick and you die pretty quickly. 
Uh, there's a big argument, however, should I drink water out of a bottle? Should I drink water out of a tap? Should the tap be filtrated? Should I drink water from Fiji? Should I drink water that's um, got flavours in it? Should I? There's vitamin water now, and uh, we always have a joke at our house when we have a drink of water, we always say, I'll have a glass of diet water, please. Uh, there's a lot of argument about water. Ultimately, this is probably the, the super product to put into your body. Uh, beauticians will tell you that if you want to have great skin, the ultimate uh, moisturizer is fluid. I had a great uh, insight into that. I was uh, listening to a plastic surgeon talk, and he shared with his uh, listening audience that there is a big mix-up in the world right now between hydration and moisturization. I'm not sure that that is a word, but I, I think we all get what that means. We spend thousands, some people, hundreds and thousands of dollars in a lifetime on moisturizer for their skin, but hydration comes from the inside by drinking fluid, making sure that you have enough fluid in your body. So how much are we supposed to drink? And there's a big argument about that. Is it eight glasses? What size are the glasses? Is it two liters? Why is it two liters? What if I'm a big person, but I'm inactive? What, I'm a, what if I'm a little person who's really active? How much fluid do we need? Uh, the technical term, which is uh, one liter for every 25 kilograms of body weight every day, one, hour, one liter for every hour of exercise. Well, what if you sweat more? Uh, what if you... Uh, don't want to drink that much water because it's just too much water. Is it possible that we get fluid from other things besides water? Uh, is it possible that something like watermelon, for example, has a lot of water in it? Watermelon, ha <laughs> ha. So as you know, I always use this uh, very cool test for whether or not you're hydrated. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze or drink more fluid till you've got clear wheeze. Check your wheeze and see if they're clear. And if you've got long yellow, uh, sorry, short, stinky yellow tinkles, uh, it's suggested that you're probably dehydrated and you need to get some more fluid into your body, whether you drink it with from water or whether you get it from coffee or tea or, or soft drink. or And, that, and isn't that interesting? Because as soon as I said that, uh, fluid from coffee, fluid from tea, fluid from soft drink, there's a lot of people that go, ah, no, soft drink's bad for you or coffee doesn't give you fluid. And there's a whole heap of argument about that. So how about this? As an exercise professional, as a parent, a teacher, a coach who really wants the people in your life to have a stack of energy, perform at their best, uh, love what they see in the mirror and get the results that they want from their eating and exercise plan, should we become experts in personalization, customization and tailoring an eating and exercise plan to suit somebody's lifestyle, to suit their likes and dislikes, to suit the times of the day that they want to eat? Uh, my really important question when it comes to food is this, good or bad food? You could talk about superfood, you can talk about macronutrition, but one of the biggest challenges I think we've done to the world is we've, we've given food a label. Chocolate is a bad food and vegetables are a good food and that's always a classic example. Well, is that true? If I eat two kilos of chocolate, if I ate this whole bowl of chocolate, I would feel sick. I don't know if, how you'd go, but I'd feel sick. Even though... Uh, almond dark chocolate is considered a superfood, I would feel sick. It's just too much. But if I ate a big bowl of broccoli, and I've always used that example because I had a student that did that, he ate three kilograms of broccoli in one, si in one sitting and felt sick and had sore tummy and passed wind and it was really stinky and he was really uncomfortable for a long period of time. So you could say that broccoli is a really good food, but if you eat too much of it, it's no longer a good food. Would that be fair? So what if we have a look at, and I'll go back to the fundamentals, uh, if you are a little bit chubby or if you've put on weight or if you're not happy with how you look in the mirror, if you just, whatever you're eating at the moment, if you were just to eat a little bit less of it, what might happen? It's one of those great questions when people talk about diets and nutrition and what have I got to eat? I always ask that very simple question, what are you eating at the moment? Do you love the way you're eating? Do you love the times of the day that you're eating? Do you love the places that you, that you eat? Yes, I love all of that. I'm just a bit chubby. Well, how about we keep doing exactly what you're doing now? We'll just eat a little bit less. 
So if you normally have two glasses of wine, let's have one. If you normally have two sandwiches, let's have one. If you normally have two pieces of fruit, let's have one. Let's just eat a little bit less. Now, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but what if that was all you had to do? And sometimes we get into, we've got to get your percentages of macronutrients right. We've got to make sure you're eating superfoods and we've got to count your calories and we've got to count your carbohydrate grams and your fat grams. We've got to make sure you're drinking enough water and water's got to be one liter for every 25 kilograms of body weight. And it becomes very complicated. What if it was as simple as that? Just eat a little bit less. And that's one of my philosophies. It doesn't have to be yours, of course, but I just want to share mine. As an old lady who's lived on the planet for a long time, uh, I would like to eat when I'm hungry because I like food and I like don't like to be hungry. I stop eating when I'm full, because why would you eat past full? Uh, I like to eat whatever I bloody well want. I hate dieting. I hate being told what I can and can't have. I like to eat the foods that I love to eat. So eat what you love. Don't eat the foods that you don't like. Why would you put calories into your body? Why would you force yourself to eat something that you don't like? So you can tell me, for example, that, uh, let's pick one, that uh, broccoli is a superfood. I don't like it. I don't like broccoli, so I don't want to eat it, even, even if it's the best superfood on the planet. Eat when you're hungry. Stop eating when you're full. Eat the foods that you love. Eat, don't eat the foods that you don't like. And why would you want to restrict the foods that you love in any amount whatsoever? But the beautiful thing is when you've got a fit, strong body, and this is a really th beautiful thing to consider, if you're really fit and if you're really strong and every system in your body is working effectively, is it possible that your hunger mechanism will be working? So when you're hungry, your body will say, like the, the petrol gauge in the car, we need some fuel, otherwise we're going to stop because we don't have enough fuel. So that's your body's mechanism to tell you, eat some food. There's another mechanism called click, click, when you go to the petrol station, you're putting, putting petrol in your car. Uh, the Bowser will tell you that the tank is now full. Well, we've got one of those too. It's called your full mechanism. If you listen to your body, it will tell you that you're full. So it'll tell you that you're hungry. It'll tell you that you're full. It'll tell you when you're thirsty. Have you noticed? Um, I better have something to drink. I feel thirsty. Uh, it tells you when you're tired. Have you noticed? But is it possible that if you're not fit and you're not strong and your body's broken down and weak and stressed and angry and, and depressed and you, you're overweight and all the mechanisms in your body aren't working properly, is it possible that your hunger mechanism won't work properly? Is it possible that your full mechanism won't work pro pro properly? Is it possible that your uh, thirsty mechanism stops working properly? Is it possible that your sleep mechanism stops working properly? What about this? What if we got really fit and really strong and is it possible that everything else would work itself out? And that's probably my, my last question. We spend a lot of time on, and you'll hear this, uh, getting great results for your body is 80% food and 20% exercise, or it's 50% food and 50% exercise. What if it was this? What if it was 100% great food? Eat what you love, don't eat what you don't like, and put high performance fuel into your body so that you can get a high performance result. How about that? 100%. How about exercise at 100%? Put in 100% effort into your sprinting, 100% into effort into your lifting, so you get fit and strong. And is it possible that if you are fit and strong, which now means you are pumping happy drugs into your brain, brain-derived neurotropic factor is fertilizer for your brain, which helps you to think more clearly, make better decisions about everything, including your food, is it possible that if we get people really fit and strong, they'll want to eat healthy food and whatever you consider to be healthy food is it possible that somebody else has a different different definition of healthy food you might be a carnivore and you get in front of a vegan vegetarian there's going to be an argument there if you if you make an argument happen why not go back to those four questions ask your client ask the person in front of you do you want to have a stack of energy do you want to perform at your best do you want to love what you see in the mirror and do you want to get the results that you want from your eating and exercise plan? If the answer is yes and you're not doing that at the moment, let's work out the very best way for you to do that. And wouldn't that be super food and exercise? Super food, exercise. Woohoo!